Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're not yet joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark. However, I wanted to start this video with a slightly light-hearted and apologetic introduction section as all my attempts at making a video this week have been an absolute disaster. I was originally going to do a video talking about storage on the boat and how you end up keeping loads of stuff that you don't actually want even in such a small space as a narrowboat. Then that basically turned into a redecoration epic, so we'll see how that progresses over the next couple of weeks. Um, then yesterday I hopped in my car and was going off out on a little adventure to film a different section of the canal and show you some different features and just interesting curiosities further afield. Wasn't the greatest of weather, admittedly, when I set out, but within 20 to 25 minutes, I had driven in the worst conditions in terms of rain, standing water on the roads that I have ever driven in in my short driving career. I was parked up in a random car park, ranting and raving, very dejected about how everything I'd been trying to do was a disaster. So today, my friends, our video is going to focus around this magical little electronic bar of soap-like device. This is my 4G internet connection, and it's literally just something like this that can fit in your pocket, and I personally believe that's had a huge impact on my boat life, as has the widespread uh, nature of the mobile network over the last few day, uh, years. Oh, even this intro is a disaster. Right, cut to the video. In my humble opinion, I would say that boat life is far easier now compared to even just five years or so ago. And that's largely due to not only advances in technology, but the more widespread adoption and cost reduction of existing technology. And a good example of that is that a lot of people always tell me to get solar panels on the roof and now, when I look on Facebook and quite often see people posting screenshots from their phone where they've got apps monitoring the electrics and the solar and the battery charge on their boat, well, they're away at work or something like that. And that's not considered a fancy feature particularly anymore. I'm thinking, hang on, I'm missing out on all sorts of gadgetry. What's going on here? Um, but that's just an example of how things are changing and shifting quite well, surprisingly rapidly. But I would say for me, being out here on the rural Langothlin Canal, one of the things that I can't believe as I'm tootling around on this boat, compared to only seven years or so ago when I bought my first narrowboat and moved it up into this general sort of region, is the unbelievable expansion of the mobile phone coverage and not only the fact that it's not only 3G internet access, it's 4G, which is unbelievably fast compared to what I was using when I was living on board Narrowboat Tilly. So why do I think this better phone coverage and internet signal is particularly significant? Well, as we walk through an unbelievably dark Ellesmere tunnel here, if we were to follow the canal in that direction for the next couple of miles, we'd find it getting into an increasingly rural environment. And that's the sort of place that I absolutely love to moor up. And in years gone by, as I say, without a very good phone connection or phone coverage at all, I would often cycle out from town after I'd been in work. And I did used to bike pretty much everywhere all the time because I've only recently got a car. Not that I like to mention that all the time. However, I would obviously pedal out and say my goodbyes to my family in Oswestry. Street. Often I would be cycling 20 miles plus to wherever the boat was. And you can imagine that they ultimately didn't have much peace of mind seeing me disappear off my bike and literally go into an uncontactable place unless they physically came out and figured out where I was moored up exactly and came and knocked on the side of the boat. So just on the general safety and security feeling, you've got that, um, well, just that benefit of knowing that in a lot more places now, people have got a good chance of actually being able to contact you or more significantly, I think. So you may have noticed that that clip just got cut short and that's because after an extremely late night walk out to the tunnel and back, I didn't actually like what he'd got recorded. So um, it's so late at night now that it's actually tomorrow morning. So before I go to bed, I'm just gonna finish that thought so I know that section of the video is done. So of course, if people can contact me in these places, it means that I can also contact them, which is nice to know on a general human level of fighting cabin fever, human interaction and general communication. But 
obviously, if I needed to contact somebody for any sort of emergency, there's that extra peace of mind when I'm going to sleep at night knowing that if I woke up in an obscure place where no one can hear you scream and hear somebody trying to crowbar those doors open, then there's at least a fighting chance that I'm going to be able to raise the alarm that something is wrong. Um, anyway, that's a very dire thought. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, of course, when I think back to my life on Tilly and all those four years of boating, kayaking and cycling, there was always little things that would go on where you'd think, flipping heck, that could have gone very badly, but luckily it didn't. And just being on my bike, going around these country lanes and blind bends and meeting a speeding driver who never would expect a cyclist to be on such an obscure out of the way road. And even in the winter times where I'd be going down some of these lanes and it'd be wet and muddy and my back tire would slip out and I'd think, oh, flipping heck, that was a close one. Of course, knowing that I can, in far more of these rural places, have a fighting chance, like I say, of alerting people that something's gone on, is definitely a good bit of peace of mind. But if you've got internet connection as well, then you'd actually be able to pinpoint on Google Maps your exact location for people and stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot to be said on the safety and peace of mind and security front as well for better improved phone coverage. So to change the scene slightly and show you some actual boaty footage, we're going to just walk to the top of the Humpback Bridge at the Frankton Basin, which is known locally for being incredibly steep and, I suppose for want of a better term, very humpy indeed. But back on topic, I did actually seriously look into getting a proper internet antenna on board earlier in the year. And I've got to be honest, as I was looking at the cost and I was looking at the um, nature of setting up a slightly more complicated setup on board for the electrics to go to it and all the rest, I just ended up thinking, why? I mean, it goes against my uh, first thing, my first moral of trying to never spend any money. And also my second simple slogan in life, which is keep it simple. And I've got to admit, as I've said, just that little bar of soap type internet device hanging up in the window is giving me almost all of the quality and in internet coverage that I could want. And on top of that, when I am doing my live streams and things like that, it's extraordinary to just be able to hop on the roof, put a tripod up there with the broadband thing in, and then, as recently happened, stream in 720p HD to over 200 people, which was an extraordinary moment. So thank you very much, and let's carry on with the video. There's another positive and also a downside of having much better internet access. And that's the fact that now that we live in an era where things like Netflix and Spotify absolutely dominate all kinds of entertainment, it's um, a lot easier to keep entertained and keep away boredom, but also experience endless distraction. I'd also say a surprising thing is the fact that YouTube has become such a huge thing and such a more professional lockdown thing than it ever was going back five, six, seven, eight years ago. And obviously, when I started doing my boat videos, as I've said before, there wasn't really anybody else doing proper sort of regular vlog style boat stuff or anything like that. So I often get comments saying like, oh, who did you used to watch before you got a boat? And I was like, I, I literally had to start building it from the ground up. And of course, now there's loads of people doing boat videos and that, and there's loads of proper good quality videos out there showing you all sorts of tutorials and how to do stuff. And so that now makes it far easier. If you're looking to get into boat life, you haven't got to go reading articles and stuff like that. You can literally see people out there like working all the electronics out, sorting out how to go through locks and how different elements of boats work and so on. And that's a resource of all these different people doing all of this and just putting it out there on YouTube that when I started boating simply didn't exist. Um, so yeah. Lots of stuff to say about the internet there. Like I say, having a broader access to that when you're out and about in random places like this, it's extraordinary just how many little differences it makes, even if they're just that peace of mind and out of conscious thought almost. Anyway, um, let's carry on. So then, my friends, how's this for a camera angle? I'm not sure actually genuinely what's in shot or not. Um, so anyway, it has occurred to me really that well, I've been out and about filming bits and bobs. I've actually spoken predominantly, endlessly about the internet and 
how much of an impact the spreading of the phone network has had. There were other topics that I wanted to take a deeper dive into, such as the fact that British retail has changed so much and there's the rise of all the budget supermarkets and discount shops that have made a lot of items that previously would have had to be bought online or would have been bought for a higher price. I mean, things like fire lighters, um, those sawdust fire logs that I use, and even things like moisture traps, things like that. There's so many random items that are particularly handy for boaters that are now almost at throwaway prices. And that's because of the prol proliferation of so many of these cheap shops over the last couple of years. And even when I look at my hometown of Oswestry, it's amazing how many have sprung up since I bought Narrowboat Tilly in what seems like the not too distant past. Although in other times, it seems like the very distant past. Um, anyway, I feel like this video has been an absolute disaster. So you know what? I'm going to give it a 0.5 number rather than a proper full number. And uh, yeah, we'll just end it here and I'll see whether I'm going to post it or not. I've already recorded one video that I haven't posted this week. So again, sad times. And typically today when I couldn't get out and about and go where I wanted to, the weather has been infinitely better than yesterday. But that's all whinging. Nobody wants to hear that. So I'll simply say thank you very much for tuning in. Please do check the links in the description below. You'll find my short Boat Life books for the Kindle as a paperback. You'll find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and all sorts of other things posting boaty pictures and goodness knows what else from out and about on the canal. Until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it boat worthy, keep it car worthy and of course, my friends, farewell. <laughs>